welcome to A Better You, your one-stop shop for everything self-improvement, self-insight and self-care. I'm Emily and today we're going to talk about language learning. I'm currently learning six languages, albeit to varying degrees. As you may know, I speak Turkish, which I taught myself over the past year. I'm also learning Kamanji, which is a dialect of Kurdish. I'm learning Persian. I'm refreshing my French and German from high school, and I'm just starting to learn Dutch as I have a very good friend from the Netherlands. When I was learning languages in school, I absolutely hated it. I was not a natural language learner. I didn't really see the point. Um, and I suspect that's partially due to where I wanted to go on holidays and things. Um, so I didn't really see that I would have any chance to use French or German anytime soon. Whereas I had a more natural affinity for Turkey, having visited there many times. This is a key difference between learning as a child versus as an adult. You do get to pick your own languages. There are also much easier ways to learn than just studying textbooks. Uh, and today I will show you how I learn the languages so that you can apply some of these tricks to your language learning. The first step is to obviously pick your language of choice. And as I've hinted towards, a really good idea around that is to make sure that you have some motivation to learn that language and that language will remain interesting to you. So for example, maybe you like the culture, maybe there's a TV show that you love, maybe you visit there often, or maybe you have friends in the country. To bring this to life, I chose Turkish and Kamanji because I visit Turkey often. Um, we actually spent three months there last year when I was on maternity leave and we traveled to Istanbul, to Didim, to Mula, to Antalya to Pamukkale, to Cappadocia, um, alongside many places in between, Konya, um, so all over the country. Um, we haven't done a lot of the east side or the southern side or the northern side really either yet, um, but there is plenty of time to do that just. We do have friends there, um, which is obviously a really good reason to learn a language. And again, that's also why I've decided to pick Dutch up because we met friends from the Netherlands while we were in Turkey. Once you've picked your language of choice, set a nice clear goal for yourself and a thereabouts time frame. For example, you may want to be conversational by your next holiday. Now, to be clear, conversational in a language is often not fluent. Um, so this is things like talking about your day or talking about what you'd like to order for a meal. Um, general chit chat without going into complex topics. So it might be that that's what you're targeting towards. If you've got a couple of years, you might target fluency. Um, fluency is debatable as to what that means. Um, but I would say once you get up to advanced stage, you can call yourself to some extent fluent, though obviously not native. The second key task is researching your language. And research the culture around it as well because again that will give you that extra motivation to learn you'll find interesting things about it and you might even find some of the reasons behind the way words were formed or the roots of certain words which is super interesting some of your research prompts could be is the language phonetic are there different dialects is there a different alphabet where is the language spoken what are the traditions of the people who speak the language and is it an easy or difficult language to learn? And that last question will very much come down to where you are from. So for example, as a native English speaker, French would naturally come easier to me because we do share a lot of cognate words. Whereas, for example, Korean might be a much more challenging language for me because there's a different alphabet there and there's different root structures. For research places, obviously the internet is a vast source of information, so do check out YouTube, Amazon and plain old Google search. I will pop a few links in the description as to where you might get some of those products. Um, but you don't have to buy products either, you can just do the Google search or the YouTube search. What I learned when I was doing my research about Turkey 
Turkey is a phonetic language, which means that if you learn the alphabet, you can pretty much learn how to say any word. Don't get me wrong, this will trip you up every now and again, but 99% of the time, Turkish is phonetic. It has a Latin alphabet, which is the same type of alphabet as English, though it does have a few missing letters and a few extra letters. It's a fairly straightforward language to learn if you are an English speaker. Um, so the sentence order changes and there's some different grammar structures. But to be honest, the actual words themselves, you will certainly find some words in common with English. If you are a native Kamanji speaker and you're wanting to learn Turkish, then it will be a lot easier because they share a lot more common words. The same with Persian. Once you've learned one language, it's a lot easier to learn others in the shared family. So, for example, learning Persian and Kamanji, now that I've learned Turkish, is a lot smoother because they do share words. And the same goes for German and Dutch. Again, it's not quite the same words, but you can certainly see the similarities within the words so that you can take a good educated guess at what a word is. I chose Turkish after spending three months in Turkey last year. And Turkey really is such a beautiful country. If you haven't been there, definitely do go there. If you've already been there, I will be doing a video on some of the lesser known spots in Turkey to definitely take a take a look at. We met even people who lived in Turkey that didn't visit some of these places, which is absolutely insane, considering how beautiful Turkey is and considering how perfect these places are. So an example would be Lake Salda. And I will insert a picture here. This looks like this in real life. Um, there are so many places in Turkey like this as well that are just not very well heard of, but are absolutely stunning. So it's definitely worth a visit, and that's why I learned Turkish. Family is really important in Turkey, and obviously traveling with two young children. And at the time, Harper was three months old when we set off for Turkey and Maddie was four, so very young children. Everybody was so welcoming and that phrase, it takes a village to raise children, really is true in Turkey, which I don't feel like it really is in a lot of countries nowadays, um, but we really did get that support there. Everybody loved our kids. They have this beautiful tradition of whenever they see a child, the best thing that they will say to a child is mashallah. Um, which is essentially a blessing, but it's a blessing without incurring um, jealousy um, or the evil eye on your child, which is absolutely lovely. Again, I'll insert a photo here. Um, this is a photo in a restaurant after um, a lady kissed our children. Not so funny in the light of a pandemic, um, but at this time, obviously, this was pre-COVID, very much pre-COVID. Um, and she came and kissed our children with bright red lipstick on and said Michelle to them. Um, and I have to admit, Amos rather lost it, ra rather couldn't stop laughing for, for hours after it because Harper walked around with this big lipstick stain all over her for the rest of the evening. Because of how much I love the country, of how much I love the people, there is a very intrinsic motivation to learn, which really keeps me going if I'm not in the mood to do a particular habit on the day. So on to the actual habits and the learning. If your chosen language is phonetic, then the first step is to learn the alphabet sounds. This will hugely help you as you start to speak the language and on your language journey, because you'll be really able to pick up on exactly what a word says, how it's pronounced. There's no real shortcut to this, I guess. It is just a lot of memorization, repeating, practice. Next, or first, if your language is not phonetic, carve out a chunk of time that is devoted to your language learning. I would suggest an hour, um, which seems like a huge time commitment, but at the end of the day, you could sit and do this while you're watching TV if you really wanted to. Some of the first core things to learn before you really get into the, the fun parts of it are the 1,000 most commonly used words in the language. And that will just really get it so that you understand a lot of the language before you start. And obviously, as you start to read text and things, that makes it a lot easier to pick up on what those texts mean so that you are just learning the specific new words. Basic questions, greetings and phrases, obviously, you want to learn a language so that you can communicate with people. So it's really important to think about what you would actually use 
in a conversational meeting and focus on those first so that you have that confidence so that you can improve on your speaking skills. Connective words such as and, like, before, so um, these are really helpful and as you go into watching your language then you will certainly need to know what these are so that you know what you can kind of ignore. And finally, and it really is finally, the grammar structures. So I would not be learning these very early in. I would be trying to read a lot of texts before I bothered to try to learn the grammar. And that's because it's extremely hard to learn the grammar theoretically, whereas you will naturally start to understand the grammar as you read more and more texts. And you can just reconfirm what you've learned by learning the grammar later down the line. And you think about this to bring this to life, a baby does not learn grammar, a baby learns how to speak. The consistent daily practice here, however, is a really key part. So however you choose to spend your time, if you're practicing for an hour a day, then you should be improving. That said, the source of input and output that you should be aiming to get within that hour are speaking the language, listening to the language, reading the language and writing the language. You could create yourself an immersive environment and this is certainly something I do, I will insert a clip here, um, where I change my whole phone to the language of choice and it won't teach you everything but certainly there are words within there that you will see more often and so you will start to learn them and it forces you into learning and so that hour could potentially be more spread out through the day as a result of these immersive language learning techniques. Sources of import are YouTube and I know with Turkish there is something called a silent vlog which is actually really helpful as a reading source because whatever they're doing on the video they will put on captions as well so you start to learn the words in association with the physical scene of what they're doing which is a really useful language acquisition technique. You could also read books in your language, you could watch Netflix in your language and Netflix will often have subtitles in your target language or you can watch one of these shows from your target language and put subtitles back in your own language on that and all of these can be on topics that you already enjoy and so enjoy watching, want to be watching which makes learning the language a lot more interesting. To support you with this, there are certain apps that are particularly useful and these are LingQ and Mondly. Mondly is a more basic app I would say, so this is something that I use when I'm first starting with a language just to learn the, the core phrases, so it will have basic greetings, numbers, colours, situational type phrases and it's got a whole lot of content on there and it will probably get you to maybe upper beginner, very very early intermediate. Um, but it's certainly a fantastic starter app and once you've worked your way through Monthly or potentially alongside there is also LingQ which you can import speaking sources from around the internet or articles from around the internet in your chosen language and the app will actually translate them for you so you can pick up on certain words and then you can review those words every week to make sure that you're actually learning them which is a really useful tool. And finally, but probably most importantly, if you can, if you have the option to do so, travel to your chosen country um, or somewhere that speaks your chosen language. This isn't always possible um, and certainly this year it hasn't been possible, but it is a fantastic way to keep yourself motivated and it's also a fantastic way to check where you are on your skill levels. And it's also a way to see the world and to enjoy the beauties that it has, which is obviously an added bonus. I will be doing an upcoming video um, attempting to speak completely in Turkish. Please be kind. <laughs> uh, we'll see how that goes, but I will be posting that video in the coming weeks. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. Every subscription I appreciate and we'd love to get to know who's watching these videos. Please do comment down below and let us know what languages you're learning, what tools you use and any top tips. Plus, do let me know if you're from Turkey and some of the places that you would recommend us seeing in the future.